Hi, my name's Irrelevant, and if you're seeing this, it's because I decided to split this video up into two separate videos, one showcasing the case, and another for the actual build. So, stay tuned. We're gonna build ourselves a DAW. The DP-504 we've already introduced, I've made a whole video about it. Now we're gonna move on to the actual contents of this build. For the processor, AMD Ryzen 3800X. Yes, this is gonna pack plenty of power for a DAW and even for video editing. I uh, cut my videos for this channel on this processor until I decided to upgrade to the 3900X, or sorry, the 3950, and then I found it, the experience was only marginally better. And in fact, this CPU clocks higher in PBO, so this is a better gamer than the 3950, ultimately. 16 gigs of G-Skill Flare X, not fancy RGB, but this isn't that kind of built. He doesn't care, it just has to work good. And this stuff is F4, 3200, 14D, 60 GFX in CL, 14, 14, 14, 34. Oh yeah, remember kids, you will have ultimately better, faster computer with 16 gigabytes of high performance RAM than you will with 32 gigabytes of mediocre RAM. Trust me, I upgraded to 32 and I was like, the games don't give a crap. This is great RAM. For what he needs, 16 is gonna be perfect for now. And the 3200 CL flat 14, as I call it, is roughly performance equivalent to 3600 flat 16. That's 16, 16, 16, 16, blah, 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 blah. Not your 16, 18, 19 all over the friggin' place. That's your mediocre RAM you want to avoid. Now, 3600 essentially replaces this RAM in our modern builds because the new 3000 series Ryzen and in the 5000 series has the faster memory controller. 3200 CL14 is what we needed back in the 1000 and 2000 series days because that's what it would have been the best performance. They're essentially the same RAM, just specced out differently. Both Samsung B die for video on the used market because that's the only way to get a good video card these days. <sighs> We have an EVGA GTX 1070. The performance of this is gonna be roughly equivalent to the Vega 64s that I'm used to, so I know it's gonna serve him well when he starts cutting videos. Something to help crunch those renders. Why is there schmoo on this? Uh-oh, that seller might get some bad feedback. Or not, I've tested it, it works great. For storage. Now, larger projects, once they're done, are gonna be offloaded to a spin drive. And unless he starts doing 4K, I know this is gonna be enough because my personal scratch drive is a 480 gig. There's a Western Digital Red, 500 gig M2 SSD. It's gonna be SATA spec, not uh, NVMe spec. But the idea here is a NAS grade drive is designed to be written hard and put away wet. So it should be able to handle the demanding read and write tasks of editing. For audio, he doesn't need anywhere near this much space. Audio projects are relatively small in the big scheme of things, but it'll be big enough to do some modest uh, video projects and all his audio projects. And then of course, once he's done, he offloads to a SATA hot swap bay. Yup, that's the reason why we got the case with the five and a quarter. Mm-hmm, yup. Now, that's his working. Boot storage? Eh, Western Digital SZ 750, 500 gig. Not a gaming PC, and I asked him about his number of VSTs. One DAW that I built for someone, he has so many VSTs, he filled his 500. He needed a one terabyte drive to fit all his VSTs. He's got all the VSTs. Heck, his one drumming program alone, Superior Drummer, was the lion's share of his install files. This guy uh, is not having as many as VSTs, so I know that this is gonna be fine. 500 gigs is all he's gonna need for now. And of course, this isn't gonna be his working drive. Remember, he's working off this drive. This is just gonna be his program installs. The 750 is, you know, your PCI Express 3.0 drive. It's not the highest performance drive. This build, again, is shifting performance more where he needs it, less where he doesn't. He just needs to boot up his programs. He's not gaming. And then he's gonna work off this drive. The 750 is gonna be great for that. And it's a tried, tested, true drive for me personally. I used one, I know it's great. To cool that processor, your firkin can't go wrong with a Hyper 212 bud. You just can't. It's not an Octua, it's not an AIO. 
but these are darn good coolers for the price. $50. We got him the black edition because he's a metalhead. It'll fit the motif. I figured he'd appreciate it. And it was only like a couple dollars more at the time. I think it was on sale. But hey, you cannot go wrong with a Hyper 212. We're not going to be wicked overclocking, but this is a system built for stability. Not extreme levels of performance. Pretty much going to be running the CPU stock. As long as they keep cool and quiet, our job here is done. How are we powering this? Well, there's two choices for power supplies in my world, EVGA or Seasonic. And we got ourselves a Seasonic GM750, semi-modular. We're going uh, price to performance here. Prerequisites are a uh, minimum of 650, 750. Uh, 750 was bang for buck and then gold. I don't like putting any power supplies less than gold rated in my builds. Not if they're gonna be a serious build. It has enough heft on it to give you confidence. See Sonic, wow, they're one of the best power supply makers. Can't go wrong. Semi-modular because yeah, from the looks of it, everything that's on here is gonna be used. That's where you split the difference. You know, you don't always need fully modular and we're not getting cable mods or anything. So that's not something we have to worry about. You got your ATX 12 volt. You got your CPU connector and you got a connector for the video card. Those are all going to get used. So in that case, semi-modular is not a bad deal. Uh, they don't really have a grommet here and they have some zip ties. That looks a bit sketchy, but whatever. It's got a seven year warranty and it's Seasonic. So let's assume they know what they're doing. And then meanwhile, bum, 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 we're going to have like one of these, maybe two. Actually, yeah, we'll probably use two. One to go up to the hot swap, one to go down to the spin drive, which is still in his old system. So that's not going to make it into this build. It's got everything he needs and nothing he doesn't. And the price was good. And finally, the motherboard. I went with this. An Asus Strix B550A Gaming. The price to performance ratio was there. Asus is the only board that I use in my builds because I know them. Not to say there aren't other excellent boards out there, but you know, I know my way around their BIOS. I know my way around their support software. Yes, Aura Sync and Armory Crate blow, but that's not a priority here. B550. Cheaper than X570. He doesn't really need X570. It's only gonna be running one video card. Well, I think that's the core of the hardware. I guess we should start with the post test. Oh, post test, post haste. Sure. Oh, this board doesn't have little buttony buttons like the other gaming boards do. We're going to have to use Monsieur Screwdriver. So what do you think, buds? Do you think it's going to post? Let's go find out. Where is it? Right there. We got no fan spin. Got a fan spin here. Oh, there it goes. First past the post, bud, and go. Of course it's gonna post, I built it. <laughs> New CPU installed, F1. Let's uh, get that RAM going. Uh-huh. And we have our two drives, and she's quiet so far. Of course, the Cooler Master fan has just a touch of motor wine. Just a touch of motor wine. Oh, Cooler Master, when are you gonna learn? She's spinning slow though. What do we got in here? AI tweaker. Oh, oh. SOC voltage default 1.025. Ah, so we finally graduated up from that uh, 1.1. Uh, CPU voltage is still pretty high. Automatic negative offset 0.05. That, yeah, well, we'll leave the rest the same. Ha ha, and already something resembling success story. Now, we get to start the build. Uh, so while I took a break there to uh, grab dinner and run some errands, we also had this machine pass four iterations of Memtest 86. Used to be I ran a lot more than that, but this RAM, well, it's from my used personal reserve. I know it's good to go and it's even matches with that processor. So I think it's safe to say we can move forward. Generally, when I build a workstation PC of this nature, it gets thoroughly tested, validated, torture tested, etc., etc., etc. I still do that ram burn-in process that I think is very passe these days, but nevertheless, it's a little touch. So, uh, let us, let us get into this, shall we? Yes, sir, I think so. That case is so fresh, shiny, and new, we gotta give it the white glove treatment. Oh, so where should we start? Let's get that motherboard into place. Yes, maybe, let's get that motherboard into place. Oh, appeal. Yay. Let's, uh, let's see if our standoffs are already ready to go. Uh, yes. Yeah, all the standoffs are already in the correct positions. I'm just gonna go through, make sure they're tight. Oh, they all need just a touch of snug. Just a touch of snug. 
The alignment is not 100% perfect. Ah, that's close enough. Oh, we need to bust out the little hardware bag, sir. Where did I put that? Get that off there, you silly muffin. Now, if I recall correctly, those are fine thread. Bon. That's different. Used to it being coarse thread. You know, one thing they have is they have the um, external mounted, I almost want to say, slots here. But uh, hey, you got, none of them are punch outs. Look at that, if you just loosen it, you can slide it up and down. That's kind of a nice touch, assuming we have no problem getting the card in there. And it has a full set of covers. None of them are punch outs. So it looks like this general area is going to be pretty cavernous because there's nothing really to go in there. Uh, we just have to decide how we want to do our cooling in this because we have one fan here that's wasted. It's going to be underneath this cover and it's not going to be able to pull in any air. In retrospect, I should have taken this out before I went to mount the uh, board. How do we even get the fans out of there? This cover must come off somehow. I think it's just a puller, bud. Yep. Just a puller. Hi. Oh, front panel lighting. Oh, we got lighting on the front panel. There's something here. I'm just gonna go ahead and unplug all these guys. Now the LED controller, you have the little uh, piton here uh, that you can use as the reset if you don't need the onboard controller. Yeah, there's total, so, totally some addressable RGB lighting in the front panel. Oh, look at this fan. This looks very, very similar to the kind of fan that came in the Turtle Tortoise Tortoise Tech case. In fact, the design of this case in general looks very similar to the Turtletronics case. Just with proper addressable RGB strip in there. I'm not opposed to that. The Turtletronics case had decent fans in it. Other than the fact that they were Molex. <laughs> there are random bits of zip tie stuck inside underneath this fan. Or twist tie, I should say. Alright, let's get this pulled through and get the cover back on. Yeah. I gotta go ahead and put this guy in. Oh, we need to mod on this guy first. This thing features a uh, front LED, which we're not gonna be needing. Cause it's one less piece of crap hanging around in there. What do we got here? Is that glued into place? I don't think that's coming out. Oh, I broke it. Okay, well that's a waste. I wonder if it'll still work. Furcatics are too fragile. Though. So I'm partially wondering how well this thing's gonna situate because it doesn't have a full assembly to mount a five and a quarter. All right, let's see. I guess we can double up that screw. Oh, oh really? What does that have a coarse threaded top? It's a double thread. What's stripped out here? The screw or the carrier? The screw. We have but one defective screw. It's a little waggly. Let's see if we schlep a drive in there how it feels. Ah, feels fine. It'll be good. Let us get the PSU in the arser in, sir. Heh, <laughs> peel? Peel? Oh, no, it'll be an Easter egg unpeeled thing. They have this uh, foamy bit in here to help support the power supply. And we have double orientation available. That's cool. We'll uh, flip this back up here. So the power supply sits on its foam. All right, how's the little bling window? Oh. See Sonic Focus, we can see it. You know, there's not much more to go into this system. Yeah, really, that's it. There's like one hard drive, but I don't have it with me. Where's that hard drive carrier? Ah, it's hiding. Might as well go schlep this in there. Have it ready. Ah, so some cable management now, sir. Hmm. Let's get all this spaghetti out of the colander. Hmm, got some lines longer than we need them to be. Well. Start with the uh, CPU 12 volt here. Oh, that's kind of encumbering. Oh, well, that's cute. I want to move this fan upwards. Or no, downwards. I want it to synchronize with the CPU fan. And in some cases, this particular exhaust fan, I might put it in the CPU optional. The idea being that it synchronizes with the CPU fan, right? As this spins up, this matches. It all depends on the RPM. This might need more RPM. But if this guy spins up and the case fan doesn't spin up to compensate, it caused some turbulence anyway. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Assuming I can do PWM on one and DC on the other, guess I'm gonna find out. This will go on CPU optional. The other option is to use two exactly matched fans. Now this twist tie we just pulled out, I'll go right here. Now I gotta run this mouth. Oh, everything's just matching up so nicely. Push that through, clip it down in there. Hmm. I guess that's gonna get strapped down into this guy and then into this guy. All right, so our PWM, the motherboard, and our adjustable RGB, we need to find a port for those. 
Oh, we got some nice down here, right by the power supply. That's a perfect little space for them. All we gotta do is peek these in. And cha fan three. Ho oh, ho. Oh. This is too easy. See so why I don't give a lot of stake to a lot of the YouTubers these days. These are the kinds of systems they're building. Computers are easy to build in cable management now. The only way to make the cable management better is pay to win by mods. Buy mods. Not even make mods or do mods. Buy mods. Oh, that was interesting. That is totally not how I expected that to come apart. Where's the USB chwa? Oh, it's up there. That's an ugly place for it. Not the worst place for it. All right, where's HD audio? All the way over there. Gonna have to come down this way and come over and join up with this bus. Oh, ooh. Let's get front panel. And it's all wrong. We need this line to come under these lines. Well, I guess we can get that bottom fan into place. Look at these special screws here. I don't know how much noise it's gonna make. We got a loose screw right here. Or do we? Huh. Yeah, maybe a bit of cheapness. That feels good now. We gotta find a place for this final fan. I'm thinking above. The only problem with these guys is they have all these cables kind of twisted up. This cable's almost like half damaged there because of how tightly it was twisted. All right, let's give us some upflow here. Might as well get this in place. It's pretty much the way it's supposed to be now. That's nice. The um, hot swap drive is gonna like have direct convection ventilation right here. You don't have to worry about it. And then this guy, we could pretty much put this guy wherever the heck we want. Uh, it might conflict with those SATA cables. I guess we should get the SATA in place first. They don't give you the nice fuzzy bag for this, this guy. We don't need any Molex or additional PCIe, but we are going to need the two SATAs, one to go to the top and one to go to the bottom. Are they the same length? Yes, they are. They are exactly the same. They got four connectors each. Okay, well, they don't give you an angled connector, so I guess we'll use a straight cable so that everything looks copacetic. Man, it's such a hard angle. Tight. All right, now where do we want these guys to go? Okay, we should have room. Well, let's see. How's that video card gonna sit in there? We're gonna be able to get the SATAs in place. I guess we can pull some punches. Yep, look at that. It fits nice. And I guess we just slide this into place now. Cover her up, passing her down. Now, typically, I like my PCI Express connector to come up over the card. I don't want the cable to pull the card down as much as it looks better like that. The only problem is we have this damn double connector. I hate these double connectors. It makes it harder to make it look nice. I've even been known to, dare I say, cut these off. However, if you get creative and you see an appropriate gap, just as long as you know you're not gonna be shorting anything out, you can sometimes tastefully just kind of sit it in the hole. And then it doesn't look completely bad. It looks kind of like, oh, it's supposed to have two connectors, yeah. Well, let's try it the other way and see what happens. I guess that does look better, and it can't weigh down the card if I pull it reasonably taut right here. It's time to burn a zip tie, zap strap, whatever you wanna call it for I will zap strap this guy to himself for uniformity. All right, so now we just have to get all this guy buttoned up. So I think we have all our wires in place now. We just have to get them strapped down. We need to consider our layering. What the f Okay, bud, okay. This is part of the problem with USB 3.0. Those connectors are too darn tight. And in trying to pull it off, we ripped the header off the board. Um, it's gonna be okay because the pins are all still there. I will be able to reconnect it, but it is just ridiculous how tight these USB 3.0 connectors get. All I wanted to do was adjust the layering. That's the first, buds. Never had that happen to me before. I don't understand why they designed these so ridiculously tight. Crisis averted. That was ridiculous. And after all that, I still botched the layering.
All right, buds, after much deliberation, this is what I've come up with for cable management. Oh, it looks, yeah, this trunk, this grand trunk's a bit, just a bit slop, but it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. All strapped down and looking nice. I have a uh, mock three and a half in place there to simulate where his is going to go, uh, just so I can get the cables right. I can take it out now. Might actually put his hardware back in the box and, uh, Chuck it in there like I found it. I suppose we can close up this panel now. Captive thumb screws, nice touch. And of course, on the inside. Well, can't go wrong. <laughs> Cavernous, it's almost needs something to fill in the void. This would uh, fit a nice water cooling build quite well. Got one fan on the top for top exhaust. You know, kind of maybe have a little bit of whoosh going this way. Uh, we better be able to dial in these fans dead slow, man, because uh, there's a lot of them. And hopefully this synchronizes with the CPU fan nice. But now's the process of turning it on, installing windows, getting it all tuned up and tested. Most of which I might not film for you, just Expedite past that and come back when I have something to show for it. And here it is. It's up and running. And right now it's torture testing. I have about four iterations right now of Prime 95 running, only four. That's right. I'm trying to simulate something a little bit more real world. So we got 40% here brewing away at the CPU. It's still staying within a reasonable turbo range and our CPUs clock it at 70C, CPU fans, you know, 1500, 1600 RPM with the CPU support. Oh, that looks like it has to come up a bit. So that's part of what I'm doing right now, thermally tuning it. I want that to make match that so 1600 needs to be at about 90 percent right now let's slide this over what happens if i put it at 70 oh put around let's try 73 it maxes out at about 1600 the cpu has a fan has to run any harder than that it's gonna be a bit tricky however air movement air movement having to push air through the cooler master is probably slowing things down a bit might as well pop this off even though it might corrupt my tests Part of the design philosophy here is that this fan is synchronized with this fan. Now, if you can get two matched fans, the same model of fan, and then you can run them on the CPU and CPU opt headers. That way, as this guy spins up, this guy spins up with it to pull the hot air. It's creating right out of the case. You cause this nice flow of turbulence, just go just like heat goes right out. It's super effective. We feel around the rest and it's pretty consistent. This fan here is a good idea. It's blowing nice cool air on the video card. The video card's been uh, chewing away here for a bit. It's at 73C, it's doing well. And the fans on it aren't really spinning up all that much. This thing is uh, pretty effectively cooling it. Now, these chassis fans, the tops, the fronts, and this guy are all synchronized together on that fan header. And it actually works pretty well. After running the AI Suite software, it was able to synchronize them all and it bottoms out at 815 RPM and it's going according to the motherboard temperature. So it was a little bit higher before I took the case out, but unless the temperature in here raises, these fans are gonna stay consistent. You don't necessarily need your chassis fans cranking out to keep the system cool. All they have to do is make sure that there's a consistent flow of fresh air come in and hot air out. And in this case, where this guy here, ouch, is pulling out most of the hot air being created by the CPU, well, it's, it's allowing the rest of the system to run cool. Also, heat coming off the GPU is getting sucked out by this guy too. So this guy's doing most of the work and it's the only one that's ramping up and down with the CPU. That way we have a system that can work hard but stay relatively quiet. Now one might debate, oh, 40%, that's not working hard. Well, we're simulating a real world scenario here. Uh, gaming isn't going to run the CPU much harder than this. We've got a dynamic load with stuff jumping around all over the place. That's gotta be more consistent. The only thing this guy's gonna to do with this system that might wind out the processor is when he renders. And that's even something relatively new to him. Now, truth be told, when you are trying to thermally tune your system, I, I, you know, we have a 3800X, that's 16 threads. I won't run Prime 95 on all 16 threads. Usually, I'll run it on four. I am trying to simulate 50% thermal density on that processor, cranking it up to 50% of if it's maximum TDP. Right here, down here, it says, yeah, we're hitting about 75 watts. So we're hitting that target. I found in practice very 
very few applications are actually really going to cause that processor to crank out. The other thing that happens is, well, it's 16 threads. Four isn't 50%. Yes, it is. It only has eight physical cores. If you max out four cores, four threads, you're getting 50% of your TDP. Even if I'm trying to test full TDP on a processor, I only max out eight cores. You will hit your max TDP running Prime 95 on only eight threads. In fact, you will run the CPU hotter on eight threads than you will 16. Multi-threading works because when the processor is bored waiting for information on this task, it goes and works on something else. When you're running something like Prime 95 and just whacking it, pinning it 100%, it doesn't have time to work on another task. It has one task that's coming at it constantly. As such, it's still going to work on the other task because it's multi-threading, but it has to switch its focus from one task to another and back and forth. And in the act of switching, you cause this, you know, moment of latency in which the CPU is not doing anything. And you'll find that if you run the test in all 16 threads, it actually won't burn as much TDP as if you only do eight. So that's my testing methodology here. If this thing can thermally cool itself at about 40 to 50% TDP, TDP, then I call it a success. Because let's face it, these torture tests are power virus type tests that don't really simulate real world use. Even when I'm rendering a 4K file on my main system, even with this processor, it still only hits 75%. So we can go ahead and do that. It's something I'm gonna do anyway. I'm gonna test this in all states. Now I usually use the maximum power consumption one, not the FPU stress one. Uh, okay, we'll go that way this time. So out of eight, we're gonna pump six cores. And we gotta put that cover back on or else there's no point. These covers come on real nice for a cheap case. Now I did have to change a few things. Initially that rear fan was on CPU opt. And no, because it's a different model of fan as the one that's on the CPU, the CPU one being PWM fan, uh, you have to pick one, you can't have both. So basically this fan being a DC fan just ran full send the whole time it was on the CPU opt. So I had to put it on its own header. It's on chassis one now, as you can see, calibrating it there. Now they're synchronized, that's good. Uh, not much else I actually had to change but my initial install. I thought I was gonna have to change fans, but no. However, the instructions aren't clear on how the RGB on that controller works. That's the reason why I thought I was gonna have to change fans. Now the controller's fan curve is works well. It takes PWM and it regulates DC fans. That's a success. And the RGB function turns out it works well too, except you have to press and hold the RGB function. Now the controller, which was normally hooked up to what would be the reset switch, you press through it to go through the different modes. And I'm trying to notice, I plugged it onto the board and it's like, okay, it's not, being controlled by the board. Wait, what happens if I press and hold? It actually took me a little while to figure out that trick and I didn't see it in the instruction. Maybe I overlooked it. But either way, that works now. It's just set to a plain red. And that feature's mostly disabled because we hooked that button up to be the actual reset switch. So I'll show him where those pins are and if he wants to change a setting. But we're gonna assume that if that controller works the way it's supposed to after this computer's been shut down for a while, it's still gonna maintain its memory and know we wanna control off the motherboard. Yeah, even with six cores, we're still only getting 50 some percent performance, still holding turbo, 82 watts TDP. Yeah, looking at our usage, we're pulling 287 or oh, 200, over 280 watts out of the wall right now. So that power supply, oh yeah, a little bit of warm, but she's gonna be just fine. Now mind you, we're not seeing a huge increase in the temperatures here. Uh, the fans did go up a bit. The support fans are about to get maxed out pretty much. I guess we'll go ahead and go full send. Torture test eight, give her. And sure enough, you're gonna see the TDP jump all the way up to target. 3,800X, what is that, 95 watts? I forget. Hmm, still only showing 60% usage. But that's it, you're, you're not gonna get more heat out of it than that, I don't think. Maybe I'm wrong. Go all 16. Aha, with all 16 threads, 110 watts. What's our power consumption look like? 340. 
15. But we're brewing away at 75C, fan speeds up, but it's still not too loud. It's part of the process. Thermal tuning, validation, yeah. We'll run it like this for a little while just to see. And at 318, oh, let's, 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 let's throw another task in here. 750 watts divided by two is 375. So we're just under our 50% rating. We probably could have went with uh, 650 for this build. But you know, you want to overcompensate a bit for hysteresis and age wear. Probably not going to replace this system for another 10 years. And now the next part of the process is I leave this to sit here like this and brew away for a few hours. It's another part of the validation process. But I, I think that's it. I'm not sure what else to tell you about this guy. It's a pretty decent looking case, I do believe. Not bad looking at all. Even this lights up for a cheap case. Wow, wow, for a cheap, for that price point. Better what most other manufacturers are doing. Like sure, the construction is mostly Chinese, but it, it, it checks the boxes. It checks the boxes. Oh, there's a kitty in the window. Hi, meow. Aw. Oh, should I go say hi to kitty? doesn't actually work. Anyway, as I was saying, I described this case as if, you know, because I'm not sure how much Ant role and tech might have actually played in the design of this case because it looks very similar to other budget designs. It's almost like they, they might have taken a cookie cutter and been like, okay, add this, change this, tweak this, that kind of thing. But I almost feel like it was designed by some people who binge watched Gamers Nexus and took notes. Like, that, that, that's how I describe this. Uncomplicated fan controller that just works. Lighting controller that just works. But not even making it a big part of this build so that it's not all friggin' taking up a bunch of space at a lot of complicated wiring. It's transparent and in the background. Plenty of airflow. Comes with lots of fans. Decent fans. You got your tempered glass. You've got your clearance. Plenty of clearance underneath so that your power supply can get air. You've got room for full water cooling, even a big water cooling system, and every fan intake has a dust filter. That's easily you could get at it and remove it. Like literally, I've watched a fair amount of Gamers Nexus and the stuff that he complains about is not in this. It's one of the best cheap cases I've seen in a long time. Granted, I haven't done a lot of commissions lately, so maybe there's other good options. Ah, who knows? But if you like this, stay tuned. I haven't got any other commissions coming up and computer season for me is kind of over as the weather gets nice. So I probably won't film much more computer content until the fall comes around. However, I have so much backlog filmed already. <laughs> I probably have videos to post all the way into the fall. So you might not even notice. This might be my official cheap case right here. Anyone else comes to me for a nice computer build. This is the case I'll get for them unless they want something very specific. There's some schmoo here though. Is that me?